there's a junk call. I get those telephones every day. Because you're popular. No, I, I always <laughs> asking you for political donations. I always answer in Spanish. Do you really? Yeah, I do. <laughs> All right, it is Tuesday, uh, July 22nd at 10.17, and we are at the residence of Mr. Sogioka. If for the uh, purpose of this interview, I would prefer to call you Beans because that's how everybody knows you, sir. Um, tell us, um, what, you, what is your full name? Mr. Yoshi. And I got that nickname was in the third grade. And how did you get that nickname, sir? Because I was always the smallest kid in the class. That was at Margaret Heath Grammar School in North Baldwin Park. I don't think that school is there anymore, but it was on Olive Street. And uh, what was the date of your birth? September 18, 1919. Were you born in the hospital or at? Uh, no, at home. Those days, he said he didn't go to a hospital. And you were born in Baldwin Park? Yes. What uh, What were your parents' name? Your, your father first and then father your father was Sekimatsu Sugiyoka. Sekimatsu. S E K I M A T. You know, Japanese names are easy. Just pronounce every syllable and you got it. <laughs> Italians are the same thing, all in vowels. And your mother's name, sir? Well, Shie, S H I Y E. Do you remember her maiden name? Omokawa. And where was your father from? Hiroshima. And your mother? Same. They were born in Japan? I mean, oh, I'm sorry. Yes. I'm sorry. They yeah. were married in Japan? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. And you and you have um, your brothers, sisters. Well, not living. No, when you yeah, were... I, I had an older brother named Yoshimaru, mm -hmm. but he passed away, and then I got a younger sister named Fumi, but she lives in Boyle Heights. Mm -hmm. She's still living. Um, your older brother, how many uh, years uh, difference were you in age? Three. And your sister? She is three years younger than me. And you were the one in the middle? Yeah. And um, where, where did you go to um, elementary school and uh, back then I guess it was junior high school? No, they didn't have a junior high. Uh, elementary was in Baldwin Park. Do you remember the name of the Yeah, name? Margaret Heath Grammar School. Do you remember where in Baldwin Park that Yeah, was? North Baldwin Park, One Mile. And that Olive Street is still there today. <laughs> but then one street above it's called Arrow Highway. Have you heard of Arrow Highway? Today they call that Laura Azusa Avenue, don't they? Or is it still Arrow Highway? I'm not sure. It's right below that Santa Fe Dam. You know yes, that dam? Yes, yes, yes. Is I'm that still me. Arrow Highway? I think so. I, I think it is. Yeah, I, I think it is. Yeah, well, okay. The uh, name don't change unless you go uh, You mm -hmm. know, that's the way it was. And um, after your um, elementary school, where did you go? Covina Union High School. That was the only high school in the area. Mm -hmm. And after high school? Did you do? Uh, did you continue on in your no, education? No, nobody went to college. Okay, they? they didn't have the money. Mm -hmm. Besides, I didn't have the brains anyway. So for four years, I worked on the farm helping my dad. Then the war started. Tell us about your dad's farm. What kind of farm was it? What just general grow? vegetable, ten acres, no big deal. Had a team of horses. General vegetables for those who aren't yeah, familiar that, with vegetables. It's or, called bunch vegetable. Any vegetable you pick and then bunch it, that's mm -hmm. called bunch vegetable. Beets, carrots, daikon. Well, yeah. Onion, green onion, those are all bunch vegetables. And why did your father only grow those and that's the only thing they knew. That's what they raised in Japan. Ah. Uh, yeah. They all came from the farm. And your your mother worked the farm as well? Yeah. She worked harder than the old man. <laughs> all the ACs did. 
in working on the farm, would you describe, let's say, um, the things that you did for the whole day working on the farm? What what would that consist of? Well, before you plant, you have to plow. Mm -hmm. So the small farmer, they only had one plow, and that's a 10-bladed, 10 10-inch 10 plow. But as the farm got a little bit bigger, then everybody had two horses. That came up. That became a team. Mm -hmm. So the two horses had to, you know, get acquainted with each other. Mm -hmm. Then they had uh, a double plow, ten inch to twelve inch. Yeah, that's the way it was. And how how large was your father's farm? Ten, ten acres. At first it was five, and then five acres, you can't make a living, so they had ten acres. Mm -hmm. That farm was on Fraser Street in Baldwin Park. You know where that is? No, sir. When Fraser Street, in, you know where Merced Avenue is? I do. Well, Merced Avenue, when you go south, that Fraser Street will make a 45 degree turn and then it'll end up at uh, 60 Freeway. In fact, if you travel free, uh, 60 Freeway, it'll say uh, free, uh, Fraser Street off ramp. Uh huh. Yeah, right there. It's still there today. Did your father own the land? Uh, yes and no. What my father did was lend Mr. Ota, I think, $7,000. Mr. Ota had the brains, so he bought 10 acres on Francisco Avenue. But uh, my dad loaned it to him just by shaking hands. He said he can do that. Mm How -hmm. Green can't do that. It has to be in writing. So after the war, we had some. We had this plot. So my brother went to Arcadia looking for some house for sale. So he located one, and that belonged to uh, former. Uh, what the heck was that name? <laughs> but anyway, he bought it for twelve hundred fifty bucks. Then there was a house mover in Baldwin Park named Crane Brothers. Their son was John Crane, he was in my class. And they had a big barn on Ramona Avenue, they called it uh, a big barn, but they had dancer every Sunday. We didn't go there. Well, that's about beyond that. Why didn't you go to the dance? Those days, Neonjin didn't dance. They thought only Mexicans danced. But today, if we don't dance, you're an outcast. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be a jitterburger in Hot Mountain. <laughs> I bet you were a good one, too. <laughs> now, you said your father owned the land? Yeah, he owned, well, he owned the land because he lent money to Mr. Ota. Mm -hmm. So technically, he owned the land, mm -hmm. but he was uh, Mr. Otter's the one that had the brains. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm going to buy 10 acres and I want to borrow $5,000 or whatever it was. The uh, neighbors, your neighbors to your father's farm, were they all Japanese? No, members? all Hagujin. And how is it that, um, that your father was able to buy uh, uh, this farm in a basically all Caucasian? My father didn't buy it. It was Mr. Ota that bought it. So Mr. Ota takes, uh, Ota, uh -huh. he takes all the credit. My dad didn't have kind of brains. And how was Mr. Ota able to do that? Uh, I guess he borrowed money himself, but that part I don't know. Mm -hmm. And your neighbors, um, your, your father's farm's neighbors, they were all Caucasian. Yes. And growing up, did you have, um, how did you get along with them? Your Real good. Real good, yeah. In fact, when we had vegetables, we always give them some to eat. Now, getting back to the vegetables, you also raise the vegetables to sell. 
Yes. How did you sell them and where did you sell them? Well, L.A. Produce Market. We never had a stand on the road. Mm -hmm. We sold it to the L.A. Produce Market. Now, those days, we didn't have a truck, so the produce market in L.A. would come out daily. Mm -hmm. Then he'd pick it up at sundown because during the day we are working. Mm -hmm. So he hauled it in, then he charged for hauling, then he sold it. So he made double money. And some of those guys were crooks. I hate to say that, but they, they were supposed to take 10% or 12%. Those guys were taking 20%. Those um, that you refer to as crooks, were they also Japanese Americans? No, yeah. No, they're Issei's. The Issei's. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, wow, those guys were crooks. <laughs> and um, when you say the uh, LA produce market, do you remember whereabouts is that located then? In it's Austin? there today. It's on Alameda and 7th Street. And Olympic Boulevard, mm. and there's three of them there on Seventh, then Central, and then there's a new one on the South Side of the freeway. Mm. That's all. The deck is all elevated, mm. so you can just truck off from the truck right to the warehouse. I haven't been there in years. So after your, uh, what time did your work day end for you on the farm? Sundown. Sundown. Well, and, we work like dogs. What did uh, what did you do after that? When when the day ended for you? Well, they didn't have television in those days. So what did you do? Uh, we had radios. Did you Philco radio? I don't know. Philco. Yeah, and boy, if I had one today, that'd be worth a thousand dollars. When I go see my uh, bookkeeper, they've got one. She says it doesn't work, but she says she'll never sell it. But it's Philco's about that tall. It's got dials. And the needle turns. <laughs> I wish I had that. So, Beans, you stayed at, at home and your whole family listened to the radio? Yeah. What what kind of things did you listen to on the radio? Were they Japanese programs? There was one Japanese program that was KRKD, that was Japanese, but I didn't listen to it. I couldn't understand anyway. Mm -hmm. So we all listened to KFI. KFI? Yeah. And what, what, what was playing on KFI? Everything. That was on from... Six o'clock in the morning to midnight, maybe all night. KFI is strong. Today, they still a strong KFI station. KFI still exists, yes. Yeah. Well, was it music? Was it uh, yeah. talk shows? Yeah, or? they had everything. And uh, how, each night, how long did you? How long? How long did the family? Stick nine o'clock. Everybody went to bed at nine o'clock. Mm -hmm. And and um, for supper. What were, what, what were the, the, the typical things that you had for supper? Japanese, Japanese food, supper. That would be rice? Gong, chazuke, koko. You know what koko is? That's radish, daikon, pickled in salt or brine. That's called koko. Well, that koko is, uh, you know, there's a cat system in Japan. Mm -hmm. So if you koko, they think you're a... <laughs> Lower cat. <cash>. Yeah. <laughs> Today, they think, where did he come from? <laughs> what about uh, protein? What about meat? Uh, was it yeah, fish? We, yeah, mostly fish. Mm -hmm. We couldn't afford... Yeah, pork chop was 32 cents a pound. Yeah. And so where did, where did, you, where did you folks obtain the fish? Was there a market? Yeah, a fish market. All those grocery stores had a fish market. But there was Mr. Babamoto in uh, El Monte, and he sold nothing but Japanese produce, but mm -hmm. he had fish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then there used to be a fishman, too. He had a, yeah, he had an old jalopy, if you think, but those days Model A Ford was something. And then in the back, he had a double open door and there was all crushed ice in there and all the fish was buried under there. So it was fresh. What, what kind of uh, fish were they selling then? Is it mostly yellowtail mm -hmm. and booty, which is tuna what? and mackerel, sardines. What do you remember most from that particular time in your life? What stands out? There was, was there something about that time in your life that 
really no we were too young to uh, I think that was the way to live <laughs> we had a dirt floor did I tell you that no you didn't you had a dirt floor I was gonna yeah, ask you to describe the house dirt floor the whole house is about the size <laughs> We are, we are the only one that had a dirt floor. God, oh my, we lived worse than an Indian. I mean, my dad was uneducated. I think he went second grade. And then, and he was tight, you know. <laughs> I hate to say that about my dog, old man, but he was tight. But he was generous, and whenever there was a donation, he donated. Mm -hmm. For that, I can't blame him. How did you, what was the relationship with you and your father? Were you, were you close? Did you talk a lot? Did well, you when you're a that? kid, you're close, but as old as we get, the farther part who <laughs> went, especially Pearl Harbor, then the Issei, boy, they were so embarrassed. Mm -hmm. They were, at that time, all the Issei's every age was 55. And we used to think, boy, they're old, but today 55 is nothing. <laughs> Which goes to show you that time has changed its environment, the climate, and the food. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Growing up, did your parents talk to you uh, much about Japan? No. Among themselves, they talked. Mm -hmm. But we didn't know, we don't know a soul in Japan anyway, even today. I don't think I have any distant relative living. Mm -hmm. And growing up, um, they spoke to you in Japanese. Oh, yeah. And you spoke to them in, in Japanese. Japanese. Yeah. Was there a time, a particular time, when you stopped speaking Japanese to them? Yeah. Well, after, well, when they died, and actually we... No, okay. Well, well they were, that, that's a good point. But. Yeah. <laughs> And then when we were growing up, we always spoke English to brothers and sisters, so there was no need to speak English. So my dad would say, speak Japanese, you know, and then we say, well, you want to speak Japanese, go back to Japan. They couldn't say anything, <laughs> <laughs> which made sense, you know. Mm -hmm. And did, did your, uh, your father in particular, did, did, he, did he get along uh, well with uh, the rest of the... Um, well, let me let me rephrase it. W was there a Japanese community at that time? Oh my God. Yeah, that Japanese community was called Kenjin Kai. Mm. If you belonged to that Kenjin, yeah. then you were real close among each other. And every Kenjin had their own Kenjin right. Kai, uh -huh. so they had their own picnic. Right. And after the war is when they formed this one over here. I see. So then you don't talk about Kendo anymore because mm. that's feudal, you know, mm -hmm. that's ancient. Today so, there's so many mixed marriage, uh, there won't be any pure Japanese. Mm. Uh, so getting back to your father, he was active in, in the, in the Kenjin Kai. What, what kinds of things did he do? No, he wasn't active. He was just a member. Uh. Uh, in church, he's just a member. He had the money, so he mm. donated. He donated just along with everybody else. Mm. But as far as being a leader, no, he was no leader. He was a follower. Mm. What about uh, on in terms of uh, religion? Did you folks have a? Uh, They're automatically Buddhist. You were automatically automatically. And where did you regularly go someplace to? Um, yeah, Nishihonganji is still there on, on First Street. The original one, the one yeah. that's a museum now. Well, that, yeah, that, that was the original. Then they moved over to First and Vignes. Yeah, yeah Vignes, yeah, right, right where that bridge comes right, down. Right, right. Yeah, the well, Fukui Mortuary mm -hmm, right there. Mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. that used to be the old Nihomachi, the right. original. Right, right. So did you, did you go there every Sunday? Or? No, we weren't religious. Farmers can go. It's impossible for farmers to go mm -hmm. because if they had fresh food Monday morning, that's got to be harvested Sunday. No other way. But today, city people don't understand that. Yeah. And uh, what about the uh, the major uh, festivals? Like, was there Obon being celebrated back yeah, then? Did you, they, did you go to no, that? No, we didn't. Have, we didn't have time to go any place. 
What about the other kinds of entertainment? Were there were there movie theaters around Baldwin Park? Or anything? You no, there used to be a people named Bang, and he had a, a latest motor motion picture. Then he'd come around once a year, and he made that round. And took him all year. Where did he show these pictures? At the mostly Buddhist church. Wow. But at the end, when we had this. Community Center, then he used to do it there, nice. but then Community Center had their own. Mm. Mm -hmm. I did not know that. Thank you. Okay. Um, how old were you and where were you when the World War II started? I was 21 when it started. And that was nine months before Pearl Harbor. So when you talk about veteran, I'm about the only one living come to think of it. Were you in the military before the war started? Yeah, nine months. How did how did you get I was in? drafted. You were drafted. Yeah, I was drafted. Then yours were drafted too, but then he was the head of the farm. Somebody has to farm to feed the nation, so he was called one 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 head the head. One A, one two, mm -hmm. one three, mm -hmm. yes, and the head mm -hmm. uh, so he was that so he never was drafted. Mm -hmm. And at the time of the when the war started, your parents were still alive. Oh yeah, oh yeah, they were still alive after the war. Mm -hmm. And so when you were in the military when the war started, where were you? Fort Lewis, Washington. And what were you doing there, sir? I was medics. Mm -hmm. I was medics. They put me in there. Company A, Third Medical Battalion. All have Jing. I think there were six in Yongjing in there. How did you end up in the medical battalion? Well, they just put you there. When you get drafted, they said, uh, what branch would you like to serve? I put field artillery, because I like to hear those big <laughs> things go off. They ask you that automatically. They put me in the medics. I about fainted. <laughs> Okay, for the record, I'm on page 40 of the pre-war San Gabriel Valley Reunion number 3, dated November 5, 1999, and I'm going to show Mr. Sogioka. Wow. What is that? A photo. Here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's me. I got a picture of it over there. Yeah, that's me. Let's see, who took that now? I was gonna oh, ask. Harry Francis, he was my ambulance driver. See, that's an ambulance there. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, he was my driver. He came from Yakima, Washington. And he was a regular army. In those days, the regular army were a bunch of, no, they were no good midfit, but they had no uh, drive. You know what I mean? He would never make a sergeant. But he was a real nice guy, the nonchalant. I don't know where from became. <laughs> Tell that's, us about that's the old field jacket. That helmet was a leftover from World War One. Yeah, there's a note there saying, "Note the World War One helmet." Where does it say that? Uh, you mean it's oh. somewhere? Oh, it down does. There. Yes. Oh, I was going to. I was going to ask you, why are you wearing a World War One helmet? But if that's all they had. That's all they had. Yeah. So describe, Bob, how was oh. life for you then in the Army? Pretty good. Yeah, I liked it. I had no discrimination. Everybody was the same. Pictures? His, uh, army? He's a Hashimoto, West Covina. What book well, is this? This must be Chie. No, there's Shig Hashimoto. This is Chie. Then Yoshie. And I don't know what the last name was. Yeah, yeah but I got it. This is a San Gabriel Judo Dojo. That was the strongest Judo Dojo from San Diego to Seattle. And my brother's in there. Oh, here he is. He was a son down. Third degree. Yeah, and this is Carl Shoji. He was a son down. Did you do judo? Oh yeah, I did judo from. Why 12. aren't you in that picture? 
Well, I was in the army. Ah. Uh, this is Ida Sensei. That guy was a spy. Four. Was he really? Yeah, he was a spy. <laughs> Every four years, they have a midshipman in Japan. And then when they graduate, they're future officers. Mm -hmm. So the two boys, Yakumo and uh, Iwate, they were destroyers. They had four stacks. Mm -hmm. And we thought, boy, oh, that's a big boat. It was 150 feet. Our fishing boat is 133. McDonald's. Yeah. He, yeah. He some of the pictures. I yeah, that's sense. That guy was a spy. Every time a worship would come, he'd get the officers and they go to Terminal Island. It was all Navy then. This was That's a Gunkan, <laughs> that's a Kobukan, which is an aircraft carrier. And I don't know the rest of those. Every tugboat that has a name, Japanese name. But that guy was a spy because he used to take them around. Based on that, you, you say that he was a spy. My brother said he was a spy. <laughs> Now, there was another thing. Uh, I can't remember what that was. But he was basically a nice, he was a Japanese school teacher also, mm -hmm. so he spoke perfect Japanese. Mm -hmm. um, means you went to Japan as a child. No, 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 I've never been to Japan. Never been to Japan in my life. Did any of your uh, family go back to Japan while no, I visit? My dad never did go. Yoshin Kazoo. Yoshin Kazoo. They went for a visit. Uh, then when Kazoo came back, he says to me, "Did you know you have a sister in Japan?" We both fainted. And my mother never did tell us that she was married in Japan. And that kid was three years old or three months old. She abandoned that kid and came to America. She didn't abandon the, the, the relatives took care of. Relatives, they did. you know, they gave it to the relatives. Yeah, they, they took care of it. I didn't know, I didn't even know that. And I always blame my mother and dad to why hide that? You know, eventually it's going to come out. Mm -hmm. They hid that all our lives till 1950. Every time I think of it, I get mad. So I well, that's okay. Some people don't believe. They believe in hiding. My parents, she was had children, but my father knew about it. She was married before. Yeah, so but they didn't they hide it. Family. At the end, they didn't hide it. That's what they call shotgun marriage. Did you know that? Thank you. No, what is that? Shotgun marriage, you have sex before you're married. Oh. And you have a baby. That's what's called shotgun marriage. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> or didn't know that while you're alone. Maybe I shouldn't tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> so from Fort Lewis means, how long were you there at Fort Lewis? I was there nine months. Mm. Well, just about a year, and then World War II started. And then they kicked all of us out, all the New Orleans, out of Fort Lewis, where they're in the artillery, infantry, and then they sent us to Camp Crowder, Missouri, 2,000 miles away. And could you describe that camp, please? Camp Crowder? Mm hmm Oh, that was a brand new camp, and then it was immaculate. Mm hmm And then when I got there, they're building the last ward, and there were, I remember there were about 33 guys up there on the hand and knees, bang, 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 bang. And you know those uh, tar paper is 90 pounds? Mm -hmm. and the, Black tar paper. Yeah, tar, tar paper. So the farmer would say, here it comes, and he'd give it a shove, and everybody just shoved it around. The, the, and they, they tacked just their shoulder width. The 33 guy had lined up and sounded like a machine gun. Bang, 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 through, and okay, next roll. Oh, that was something. They had manpower. And uh, again, what kind of uh, people were inside this camp? Mm. These were military people, U.S. Army personnel? You mean the guards? No, 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 inside the camp. What did you do in No, the they're no, they're just for us, return needs. Well, I was in camp, Lucy was in camp. No, no, no. This, this camp in Missouri, you... you camp Crowder, Missouri, right. yeah. 
the uh, the bulk they were military people. Yeah, they were Signal Corps Replacement Training Center. Mm -hmm. There was forty three thousand people there, all men, all same size, same age. And what did you do there? Well, I was in the medics. So you were supporting the supporting the camp. Well, well, they have infirmaries, mm -hmm. and when the guy gets sick, he goes to the infirmary nearest his barracks, and then.